Hello! This is Somsa again from GamingOnLinux.com and as you can see, this is the long overdue review of Fahrenheit Indigo Prophecy Remastered. So yeah, I, I played this game through, uh, well, uh, over a week ago and um, sadly I was unable to make a review of this game because I've been sick. I'm, I'm a person who apparently gets uh, sick with the flu very easily <clears throat> but uh, now that I'm I'm a bit more healthy now and I can actually talk so I can now give my review of this game so yeah I played this through uh, I wasted my how long did I waste on this game yeah like eight hours and uh, so I've played this game through once so instead of doing the normal uh, first impressions, well, basically the difference is not a great one, but uh, now I can actually give my thoughts on the full game. So let's press enter and let's actually uh, play this game. So of course, because this is a very uh, story-driven game, I'm not going to start from like middle, because I want to avoid spoilers, so we're pro probably going to play from the beginning uh, up until I have well talked about everything and if I have to show you some special sections of the game I'm going to uh, play some scenes that uh, uh, that don't spoil anything uh, that are there just to uh, uh, demonstrate certain gameplay elements but yeah let's uh, as you can see I have two profiles here I played this on a stream but uh, let's go with my main profile because this is the profile I have actually completed the game on <clears throat> so yeah, uh, you might have uh, you might have heard about Fahrenheit or Indigo Prophecy, depending on whether you are in the states or not. Um, so this was a game that was released originally ten years ago. Uh, it was a game that uh, the developers called an uh, interactive movie instead of calling it like a action adventure game or anything like that. And there is a reason why they called this uh, game an interactive movie. And in fact, the new game uh, button here says new movie. So yeah, th th there's a very good reason why this is called a new movie instead of calling it a new game. Um, and um, uh, of course this is the remastered version done by Asper. Uh, the remaster doesn't really change, it, it is not a remake, it's a remaster. So this is essentially the same game, uh, the ge the gameplay isn't really changed. Uh, the remaster added better controller options, as far as I know, uh, a mobile port, of course the port to Linux, and, uh, and it has HD textures instead of uh, the original SD textures. It also, also ships with the SD textures so if you want to see the difference we can toggle between that with the F9 key if I recall correctly the gameplay is basically the same as it was uh, in the original and I'm playing this on uh, keyboard and mouse because my controller is a very it's a it's a weird one so I'm uh, the game apparently doesn't uh, recognize it properly and I can I well at least I haven't been able to play it I maybe if I tweaked around a bit I could get the controller working but uh, for me the keyboard and mouse combination is good enough so let's uh, let's start from the very beginning so let uh, first we are uh, maybe I should mention a bit about the story so overall the story goes like this uh, you play as both the this person, uh, uh, Kane, who has um, committed a murder, and uh, well, we are going to commit a murder soon enough, and um, we have no recollection why we did that, and of course we want to then find out why that happened. Um, but we also play the other side, so we don't only play as the murderer. We also play as the police, and the, as the police, we need to find Kane. So that that's an interesting thing, and uh, the game really makes you—you you really—you really have to think 
if you want to catch the guy or not. Well, of course, if, if, to progress, you of course need to catch the guy, but uh, anyway, let's start from the beginning, and I'm going to go without saving. Uh, so that way, our saves won't be lost, and it doesn't really matter, because I have all the chapters unlocked anyway. So yeah, let's go without saving. And now we get the intro cinematic. Yes, well, so I'm going to shut up so that you can listen to the voice acting a bit. Things are never quite what they seem. We think we understand the world around us, but we really only see the outside, what it seems to be. I used to be just like you. I believed in humanity, the newspapers, soap commercials, politics, and history books. But one day, the world kicks you in the teeth, and you don't have any choice but to see things the way they really are. My name is Lucas Kane. My story is the one where an ordinary guy has something extraordinary happen to him. Maybe it was supposed to happen. Maybe it was my destiny or my karma or whatever. I know one thing for sure. Nothing's ever going to be the same again. And as you can see, there was a bit of a frame drop in there. Uh, that seems to be... That seems to be a thing. Uh, I'm sorry I'm talking over the cinematic, but I have to mention that so that I don't forget. Uh, the port is overall very good, but there are these occasional frame drops. Um, you might be able to make out the uh, uh, the FPS counter on the top, uh, top left corner. The game mostly runs at 100 FPS, uh, but sometimes it drops down to like uh, 20. It's not during gameplay or anything, it's just a quick frame drop. But it's a, it's a weird thing that sometimes happens. Uh, it might be something like it's loading new stuff or something. Yeah, right there it dropped for a second. And right there again. <clears throat> but overall the game performs very well. So yeah, this is basically the murder that is going to happen. We'll get to play soon enough, but this is an important part of the story. Once again, some frame dropping. It might also be that the recorder that I'm using is also... It, it, it uses some CPU, so it might be... What have I done? 
And now the actual game begins. I, I didn't want. It was like a dream. And as you can see, we are not. We are in big trouble. I've, I've got to get out of here before somebody comes in here. Okay. Uh, indeed, and uh. <clears throat> I'm going to pause this game for one reason, so that I can talk a bit about the game. And um, the reason I, why I'm stopping is because this game features a thing called time-based triggers. So events may, might be triggered by a timer. That means that I have a limited amount of time to actually do this part. Uh, the game gives you plenty of time, so you don't really need to rush, at least in this uh, area, but uh, the game does uh, sort of, t uh, it has these timers, so you only have certain amount of time to do certain things in certain areas before things start to happen. In this case, the police is going to, the, the, the cop is going to come into the restroom ev uh, eventually. We, s we have a bit of time to uh, sort of uh, clean up before that happens. So our job now is to get uh, uh, to get out of the, uh, the, 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 the the diner. So the way this works is it uses sort of very old-school controlling mechanics uh, combined with an interesting uh, sort of a, a system for interacting with things. So if I wanted to interact with this body, what I would do is I would, uh, of course, and it, but this game, by the way, uses tank controls. So I turn with the uh, A and D keys, and I walk forward with the W key. And if I want to turn, uh, if I want to do a U turn, I can press S, and now I can walk this way. Uh, but anyway, if I want to interact with this body, what I what I need to do is I need to face it. Then I need to press the left mouse button, and then I need to move the mouse down. <clears throat> and that way, and this is also a thing. So this game is quite QTE heavy, and this is a... Uh, yeah, when you are, you, when you do th stuff that uh, requires strength, you need to tap a the A and D keys. There are also, uh, there is also another type of QTE that we might have to also uh, do, and definitely will have to do, but yeah, let's uh, wash our hands with the, uh, on the sink so that we don't appear so uh, suspicious. So what I'm basically doing is I'm buying us some time, and I'm trying to hide the evidence. You can of course not do this, you can just wait until the cop comes in and uh, just uh, uh, run, but that's not a good idea. Necessarily, that is. And also the meter that you might have seen, especially when we killed the man, uh, that the uh, that thing is your. I've got to get rid of it. it. It's sort of your mood meter, and now the cop is definitely going to, uh, going to come in soon. Uh, if that drops down too much, currently we are. Uh, increasing it because we're doing stuff that helps our mood. Uh, we might also want to mop up. So yeah, let's uh, let's pick them up and let's actually. Uh, nope, nope, that's the wrong one. So I need to now go up, and uh, I apparently need to move the move it up and down so that I clean up. So now I'm only stressed. And if that meter drops down to zero, you apparently commit suicide. I have never had that happen to me. Okay, so the cop is definitely coming in soon. So let's let's actually let's let's run. Uh, let's not appear too suspicious, though. Uh, you can just run this bit if you want to. And by the way, you can see the game is doing some interesting camera work. So it's sorry, no time. So it's it's showing me the what the cop is doing on the other on the uh, the right side of the screen, and it's showing me what I do on the left side. And this is one thing that the game does a lot. 
Okay, so the cop found the body. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, I'm just going to escape. Nobody goes anywhere. A crime With the metro. The I'm going to have to ask you to stay calm and wait here for the police to arrive and check your IDs. And apparently we were uh, noticed by a hobo, but that shouldn't do us anything bad. And now we are going to switch sides, so now we are going to play the police, and now we get to investigate the crime scene. And now we get in uh, get introduced to our two other main characters. Dog's dying. That's it. Why do they always wait for me to go on duty before they start killing each other in the middle of the night? Tyler, somebody gets murdered every day in New York. But especially when I'm on night duty. It's as if every psycho in the city has it in for me. If you want a bitch, do it inside. That way I don't have to freeze to death listening to it. <laughs> You're the boss, Carla. Okay, so now our job is we can, of Five course, years the forest, uh, seen some murders. Get this get used to death. You just sort of cinematic death. piece here. I still don't know if it was fatigue, or cold, or something else. But I clearly remember the bad feeling we got when I walked into that restaurant. As if some part of me already knew that this time, something was different. And indeed, something was different. Also, I can change the camera angle with the right mouse button. On open areas, it allows me to change the camera uh, basically freely, but once we go inside the diner, it actually only allows us to view the uh, view the area What's from certain you? angles. Evening, Inspector. I've been waiting for you. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Martin. So, what happened? Homicide. I found the body in the toilets. I had to go before I went home. And a big part of this is the uh, this talking. So strange? you use no, the same no, mouse uh, mouse controls to talk, and you have a timer. So if you wait too long, all, uh, the uh, to to him, you sort of yeah. fail. So we can ask various kinds of things like uh, how, how the, the how the murder was committed and other. stuff like that. But we wait so obviously we want to ca uh, gather a lot of evidence here. Who is the victim? His name was, uh, John Winston, a regular here at the restaurant. Kate knew him. She could tell you more. Okay, and Which we could... Which table was the suspect sitting at? Oh, he was sitting at that table over there. Is that the waitress over there? Yeah, Kate Morrison. I think that you should interrogate her. If you don't mind me saying, go easy on her, Inspector. She's still in a state of shock. Thanks for your help, Martin. It's late. I think you can go home and get some sleep. I'm gonna wait until you're finished with Kate, if you don't mind. I want to make sure she gets home okay. Okay. And now we can also switch characters. So now we are playing as two characters, so we can... If I press 2, I can actually switch between them. And as you can see here, I can't actually move the camera freely. I only have these certain angles that I can um, watch the things. From, and if I press F9, that switches the uh, the textures. So now we are back to SD textures. So this is what the game would more or less look like with the original texture work. So obviously you need uh, the uh, all the angles are a bit uh, uh, they are more rough and everything looks a bit older. So if I switch back to the HD, the the you can see the difference, but the difference isn't that big, and the models they used are, uh, they are basically the same. So if I look at, uh, if we look at the models, they are basically the same thing. The only difference is that they have HD textures in the HD mode. Uh, so even the models are basically the same, and you can sometimes see, uh, like uh, that these models are a bit old. Uh, they are a bit rough, they don't have quite as many polygons as uh, modern games do. Uh, but um, uh, the uh, HD textures still make the game look a lot better. And of course I'm playing this game on a 16x9, uh, which wasn't 
uh, possible unless you did some squeaking with the original game. Uh, so we could ask these guys what they are up to, but we need to investigate. Uh, uh, we would need to interrogate the waitress. So yeah, we can also. This is what where Kate? the where I we can really make some choices. I actually here. did make already Is some. I already made questions? some choices with the in the first no. scene. Go ahead. So we can ask this. Uh, uh, this woman various kinds of things and we can also decide how we want to approach the problem so we can be like supportive we can uh, we can act rough and stuff like that John was a regular came every Monday he always ordered the same thing and I left a nice tip indeed and could anyone else have come in? Let's ask a couple of, couple more questions and then we're actually going to investigate the crime scene properly. If somebody else had come in, I would have seen them. Mm -hmm. Let's ask the description of the murderer. I only saw him for a few seconds. I guess he was about average height, fairly young. That's all I can remember. Do you know whether the victim had any enemies? Anybody that might want to kill him? John was just a nice, normal guy. I can't see why anybody would want to kill him. Did you get the impression that John and the suspect knew each other? No. I don't think they did know each other. The man had already been here a while when John came in. They didn't talk to each other. No, I'm, I'm almost so yeah, a lot of this game is just talking and QTEs, and you can probably get the idea why uh, why they called this game an interactive movie. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. I didn't even see John get up. Oh my God! So yeah, th this is where we can uh, insist or we can cheer up. So let's cheer up. And these uh, these small decisions that you make throughout the game, they actually they actually matter. Actually, one thing I could mention about the beginning scene when we escaped is that we could have escaped through various uh, like means. Uh, using the metro is one of the options. Uh, another option would be to get uh, to go through uh, to take a cab and uh, travel to, uh, through uh, taxi and stuff like that. And actually, that matters in the long run because when you maybe I shouldn't talk about this, but uh, I'm, this is a very minor thing. When you travel with uh, with a taxi. Uh, yes. uh, they actually, your name gets, uh, yeah, your name is in the registry for the customers of the taxi company. So when they start investigating this stuff, they actually notice that you have taken a cab from this area so they can sort of get evidence the of the through that yeah. and we are also going to gather a bunch of evidence when once it. we actually get to investigate the area but now we are sort of stuck talking I'm, I'm, I'm basically talking over this because I have to talk over this otherwise I'm never going to be able to talk about the things but yeah this game is it's very story heavy. The story is basically the main part of the uh, whole experience. There isn't really... One thing that might turn you off is that there isn't that much like... Action. Most of the action here is in the form of QTEs. Uh, uh, some of this stuff is of course... Uh, can I actually avoid talking to those two guys? Hopefully. Let's actually check the crime scene if you, if we can yes we can so now we get to investigate this area so of course we want to check the body and we want to find 
the murder weapon, which was hidden. We did hit the weapon, and the actual uh, the game actually didn't show us where we hit the weapon. And that's an interesting thing because if if it had shown where we had hit the weapon, we would obviously know it immediately. But in this case, we have to actually Don't find it. Struggle. Looks like the guy was taken totally by surprise. Indeed, let's check the body. Several wounds on the left side of the chest, in the area of the heart. They appear to be knife wounds. And because we are playing as two different uh, people here, uh, we can actually do various kinds of things that are only limited to one or the other. So, for example, uh, if we... I can't remember this guy's name. I'm really bad at names. Anyway, so... Not as far as I know. Oh, right. I get it. I'll take care of it. But one thing that we can only to do as this guy is uh, check the uh, check the trash bin. And looky Just here. What exactly are you doing, Tyler? I'm checking for clues. What do you think? Actually, did we hide the murder weapon? I think we did, but it's not where I thought it would be. That's interesting. Also, uh, let's take a leak. Tyler? What? This is a restroom, isn't it? No, this is a crime scene. It's cool, I'm done. <laughs> All that coffee I've been drinking to try and stay awake. But yeah, that, that, that's, that actually made Carla more stressed. So that was, um, that was actually a bad decision overall. This is interesting because I have no clue where the knife is at. But, um, we do still have some... Ah, damn it. Carla! Get out the way. Uh, this is interesting. So this means that I actually hit the evidence a lot better than I did. Or maybe I just forget something, that's also a possibility. Nothing here. But anyway, the fact that we, for example, that we... Blood on the mop. The killer must have used it to clean up the mess. That, well, that's a... That's a piece of evidence there. How about the window? I don't think there is much we can do with the window. In fact, maybe we should talk with the... Talk with the two guys outside. Are they there? Yep, they are here. Uh, but there, the, the game involves a lot of choices. And the choices are what actually make the game very interesting because this cho uh, this even though they might be very small choices like did you hide the murder weapon uh, did you go uh, did you escape the crime scene using a metro or a taxi they still matter and uh, there are bigger um, like uh, choices that you make further into the ch uh, in this story that actually matter even hey, more hey Frank how's it going and they hey, they Carla. sort of hey Carla so you guys find anything? Some so if you take, there, if you make certain well, choices, the story is going to be a bit different. The, uh, the story overall will stay mostly the same, but uh, certain parts of the story are going to be different. And sometimes you need to uh, do things in a certain way. So these guys were not not helpful at all. I'm still very curious about the murder weapon because I definitely hid it. Uh, it's not on the floor or anything, and where it's usually, it's uh, it's in the trash bin. And in fact, let's check that again if we can. No, we can't. Ah, well, this is interesting. Either the game bugged out, or I actually did a better job. But let's uh, let's investigate the body as as him. That's also a piece of evidence. But uh, I'm not sure if we can actually... 
Huh? Well, that's that's very useful. I don't think we can actually find much stuff in here. We could, of course, check the mirror, but that's that's not going to be all that helpful. I'm not sure if we can actually find all these stuff. I'm a bit... Uh... Oh, right, we actually... One thing we should check is the table. So let's check the table and let's see if we can find any evidence here, hopefully. Because some, for some reason it seems that my huh. evidence Maybe finding before. skills have the deteriorated a lot. But yeah, th here there's a bunch of stuff that we can check. A book. The Tempest by Shakespeare. If this is his, it's a pretty weird book for a killer to be reading. Garrett, there's a book under this table. Why don't you check it out for Prince? You got it, Carla. That's actually a piece of evidence that I didn't find last time. Well, well, the coffee. So this is interesting. Good. So the game seems to be uh, doing things of. Uh, Either I'm spotting things that I didn't didn't spot last time, or maybe my choices actually made made a difference. It's very po it's possible. A cup of coffee and a soft drink? That's weird. He's a caffeine addict, or else he wasn't alone. And I think we can also investigate the table as him. So let's see if we can find something else. Steak and fries. Looks like he barely touched his food. And, and let's check the table fries, overall. Table. But anyway, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't think we can find much else. We could of course talk with these two guys. I'm not. I'm not too interested in talking. Uh, Did you find anything, Tyler? <sighs> well, that I'd have to be able to keep my eyes open. Keep up the good work, Tyler. Nice. One thing we should investigate, though, is the hobo outside. So let's uh, let's check that, and then I think we have plenty of uh, hey, Carla, evidence. Hey, take a look outside. See if I can find anything. Indeed. Of course, we know that there uh, the hobo was around here. But yeah, like I said, these small choices, they make a difference. They, they change the game further into the game, so the choices are actually, they, they cause long-term changes. And the hobo is here, indeed. So we could ask him if he knows anything. Yo, what do you want? I was wondering, you didn't happen to see anything unusual tonight, did you? Ah, leave me alone. I got nothing to say. I don't talk to cops. <laughs> right. Well, that's a helpful guy. Helpful. But yeah, that that doesn't that doesn't lead to anywhere. But uh, anyway, I think we have plenty of stuff we have already found out. So next up, I'm going to show you a bit, uh, a bit more of the QTE stuff. So I'm probably going to skip forward in this story, uh, because the next part isn't all that interesting. Let's just yeah, let's on, just leave. Let's go, Carla. I can't even keep my eyes open anymore. I want to take another look around. We haven't found the murder weapon. It might still be around here somewhere. So we have to find the murder weapon. Well, that's interesting because I haven't been able to find it. It should be in the restroom. But if I can't find it. Uh, then I'm just going to skip forward. Where would I hide a... Seriously, the only place I would probably hide a murder weapon is in the trash bin. Or in the toilet, but I don't think there is anything in the toilets. Or I would throw it out the window. Maybe that's actually the thing. Let's... I'm, I'm just going to take a... I'm going to investigate. This is an important thing. Uh, can I actually go through here? Yes, I can. Huh, I wonder. So one thing that could possibly happen is I could throw it out the window. 
This is the window from the toilets in the restaurant. Indeed. So could it be that the murder weapon is out here? Uh, maybe I maybe I something in here. Well, this this is just going to improve our mood. Nothing else. And not even that. Okay. Well, that's led nowhere. Okay, I have no clue where the murder weapon might be. Last time I played this, it was in the trash bin. But that might have been because I hid the weapon extremely quickly. So that means that I had plenty of time. But yeah, I'm going to stop. And let's actually, I'm going to show you a uh, an, er an area or a chapter with more of the QTE stuff. So let's actually scroll through. I think, yeah, it's this. This is, uh, yeah, without saving. So this is an area that shouldn't uh, give you too many spoilers. So we are once again playing as Kane. And this is at his workplace in the bank. But uh, the... Drilling holes into my brain. And to top it off, I couldn't keep any food down. My body seemed to be fighting against something, but I still didn't know what. Indeed. The reason why I'm showing you this area is because I want to show you a QTE. And for some reason, Lucas seems to have... Always when I play this game, Lucas seems to have the best mood overall. Uh, I have no idea why that is because well he's the murderer so you'd think he would uh... my life no matter what don't raise any suspicions despite the state i was in i decided to go to work as though nothing had happened yeah you'd think the murderer would have would be like super depressed especially that uh when he doesn't know why he committed a murder and he's I'm like running from the police and stuff in the Naser and Jones bank I share my office with Warren. Do you know what there is going to be a, sm a tiny, tiny, tiny spoiler. I but uh, a it's a very minor one. Probably then. nothing Grab that you will care about. Okay, yeah, this is QTE time. So, this is how the QTEs work. That so, is so bizarre. He gives me the creeps. What'd you say? What? You were saying something? No, I didn't say anything. Are you sure you're all right, Lucas? I... I heard something, as though I could read his mind. Yeah, so the... These uh, QTEs, the other type of the QTEs, the... Uh, so, sort of Simon Says thing, where you have to be fast and you need to tap the right buttons. Ooh, spooky. Lucas? And you do that you with okay? the WASD keys and yeah, the yeah, uh, the arrow keys. Uh, it's a bit weird combination, but the get ready thing, all, uh, it's a... Uh, oh, we have a call. Lucas Kane. Hello, Lucas. Oh, hello, Tiffany. I left a message on your machine last night. Um, I'd like to come and pick up some stuff at your place. Anyway, uh, I'll let them talk. So, it's a bit weird, tra uh, like, translation from, uh, yes. I should be back home around 8 o'clock tonight. From the, uh, of course this game was originally made for console, where you have two analog sticks. So it's, it's not the, it's not the greatest con uh, conversion, but the, it's, it still works well enough and once again we need to get ready and we need to do the QTs. Look out the cup. Lucas, is there a problem? No, I I, I just thought it seemed so real. I saw that coffee. Yeah, we're 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 just completely breaking down. Tiffany and I. About two years ago I guess. I haven't been able to throw it away yet.
Aha! Hello? Yes, sir. We'll get on that right away. Station 62 is down. I'll go. No, forget it. I'll, I'll handle it. Whatever you say. Okay, and this this part should give us a major QT. Just like I'd seen it, like the cop in the apartment. And is it, this is a fairly really crazy one, so they happen? It, sh it should be interesting to see how this goes. I've played this game through, so I've gotten a bit of practice. But when I did this part for the first time, I screwed up completely. And. Um, Failing this QT is usually leads to you losing lives. You ha you have a set amount of lives, and if you fail enough, you die. Uh, we could of course run. Oh. <coughs> but yeah, we we are we are just completely breaking down. But yeah, let's let's fix this machine. And then that should trigger the QTE. The question is, is this real or is it not? And those, uh, those cir um, uh, well, those circles, uh, up top are actually our lives. So if we fail any of these, we are going to lose a life, and if we fail enough, we die. Quite simple, simple as that. And this is the most action you are going to see in this game, basically. So you are, you're not going to, most of the time you won't be like uh, doing stuff by yourself. It's mostly like these guided QTEs, and now we need to Tap A and D. Awesome. And this is obviously going to be the deal breaker for some people because a lot of people don't like QTEs. Uh, but uh, the thing is, this game isn't trying to be like uh, it's it's not attempting to be appealing to people who like uh, like. A lot of action like uh, uh, gunning people down and stuff like that. Yeah, it's more the story. The, the story focus is the main thing here. And if you really like good stories, then I can recommend this one. Uh, the oh, I failed that one a bit, but it's still you can fail at this a bit. But if you fail too much, it's going to count as a failure. But uh, if you like tap the wrong key once, that's okay. Game still counts that as a success. But yeah, overall, the uh, I can from um, from the story perspective, I can recommend this game. The story is it's a it's a nice story. I enjoyed it. And now we need to do this crazy part where we we will only fail. <laughs> that last part is something that you can't it, you can't complete that as far as I know. And look who's there. Two faces of the same servant. One in our world, the other in the other world. Woe to he who sees both sides. And there's nothing we can do. Lucas? Lucas, what happened? Did you hear me? Are you alright? But as you can see, nothing... Hey, well, you've heard everything is not as it seems. You're bleeding. I, uh, I gotta go. I didn't have the slightest idea what had happened. But one thing I do know, those things almost killed me. They might have, they might have. But I think that's plenty of stuff, and by the way, I, this is a 
think that's worth showing. So sometimes when you complete a chapter, uh, the game allows you to choose who you want to play at, uh, as next. So we could play as Carla Valenci, uh, go to the mortuary to do more police stuff, or we could play as Tyler Miles. Um, you mostly play as the three dudes, the uh, Lucas Kane, uh, Carla Valenci, and uh, Tyler Miles. You also play as uh, certain other people, but only for a limited amount of time. But anyway, I think that's plenty. I'm going to just exit to the main menu and uh, finish up. Otherwise, I'm going to show you the whole game. Overall, I liked Fahrenheit Indigo Prophecy Remastered. The story was interesting. But uh, the thing was uh, with the story was that at first the story goes sort of slowly, uh, uh, but it's still interesting. But around the halfway through, well, the halfway mark, the story sort of goes kind of insane. There's a huge plot twist, and uh, the ga the game sort of jumps from the uh, like. Um, at first, it's it's obviously like a, a thriller, where you play as both the police trying to figure out what this murder is all about, and the murderer trying to figure out why he did this thing, and trying to figure out who might have, or what might have, made him do it. But uh, around the halfway mark, it sort of changes, it's no longer just a thriller. Suddenly, there's like a completely supernatural things happening. And uh, at that point I was like, um, I'm not sure if this is what I wanted to see, I'm still not sure. But overall I like the story. And I like the... Of course the, this game sort of... It doesn't like lack gameplay, there is certain gameplay and you can certainly fail this game. It's not just like complete cutscenes and stuff like that. But it's, it's the cutscenes and the QTEs are a big part of the game. And that's something that obviously not a lot, not a whole lot of people are going to like. Uh, but if you are into like these sort of heavily story-based games that allow you to make some choices that are going to affect the story, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, but but you, but uh, the most action you will get is going to be in the form of QTEs, then this is obviously something you should try. Uh, obviously this game is a cult classic. Uh, a lot of people are very fanatical fans of this game, and a lot of people were really uh, thrilled to see this game coming to Linux. And I can see why. Uh, the game certainly is an interesting game, and uh, uh, the, there are... For a 10-year-old game, this game did things that were definitely very innovative for its time. Of course, now it's it's a bit old. Of course, the uh, new HD textures make the game uh, last a bit longer. But certainly, it still has that so, sort of old game feel. The tank controls are not really something you would have these days. And the, uh, the models are not the... They are not perfect. But um, overall, I had 8 hours of fun with this game. Uh, I I liked to play this game. I was always interested to see what the story would... What, what would happen in the story next. So I was always... Uh, I, I always liked to play this game. I always liked to get back to the game. I always liked to play one more chapter. Uh, of course, it doesn't have... I think the replayability is a bit limited. Of course, as you could see, I didn't figure out where the murder weapon was. So <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. So, obviously, the, the game changes up a bit. Uh, so, there is still some replayability, and the choices you make, of course, because they affect the story, even in the long run. You will definitely probably want to play at least two uh, this game at least two times to see most of the stuff. Um, but of course the story will still remain mostly the same. 
and because of because most the most of the action is in the form of QTEs that only really are you bashing certain buttons in certain order it doesn't really have that much replayability on the gameplay side of course there is still some on the story side and most of the stuff is on the story side but uh, you, you need to keep that in mind uh, but I do recommend this game uh, I like stories I like games that have good stories and even though I didn't really necessarily like the gameplay a whole lot I still like the story enough to uh, uh, like get th get through and I like the idea that uh, basically the game works like sort of like this you play a certain bit of gameplay and then you are rewarded with a new bit of the story so that sort of uh, that sort of rewarding system made me play through the game and I had fun with it so if you are into these types of games then certainly pick this game up. It's it's definitely worth it, and it's uh, it has guaranteed around eight hours of gameplay for you to enjoy. So that's basically it for me on Fahrenheit, and uh, naturally we will see in future videos.